Hello, I'm Jasmine Bertels and I'm here with Sam Volkering, who is an investment editor and crypto expert at South Bank Investments. Hello, Sam. Hi, Jasmine. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Even though we're looking at an extremely volatile uh, economic outlook across the world at the moment, but it does seem that it's, um, it's doing nice things for crypto. Yeah, absolutely. We are uh, we're in. I want to say unprecedented times with the with the banking uh, sector and, and global financial system, but it's not unprecedented times. We've kind of been here before, uh, mm. and it's and and the way that the crypto market is reacting at the moment, in particular Bitcoin, uh, is some people will look at it and say it's phenomenal. Uh, for me, and where we've been uh, over the last fourteen years now uh, with with Bitcoin. Uh, it's predictable, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that the market is reacting to the current banking crisis that's sort of playing out around the world is exactly the way in which uh, I would expect that Bitcoin would behave. Yeah, because it does seem that there are a lot of people in all kinds of countries who are questioning their own currency they're questioning their own banks. So they're looking for alternatives. Gold is doing nicely, mm -hmm. not as well as I would have expected, silver as well. But yeah, are you seeing Bitcoin now as, as a safe haven and also potentially a way, people are seeing it as a way to actually buy and sell? What 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 Bitcoin provides is, um, and we've said this for a long time, is it provides an opt-out from the banking system as we know, the traditional banking system. Mm. What I think a lot of people are starting to now realize, which it's funny, a lot of people don't realize is that the way that the traditional banking system works is a, a fractional reserve. So banks yeah. don't yeah. ever actually hold all the deposits that exist in the bank. And, and this is a byproduct of the way that the financial system is designed. And this is what leads to these things called bank runs where people go to the bank, as you're well aware, they want their money and the bank doesn't have enough money for everybody to get their deposits mm -hmm. back. And this is what's you know, playing out in the US at the moment. And that contagion is starting to spread around the global banks as well. Mm -hmm. So people are starting to wake up to the idea of a fractional banking system. And what crypto does and what Bitcoin does in particular is Bitcoin is a fixed supply of money and will always be a fixed supply and has always been a fixed supply since its creation. And so what it, it provides is it provides a, a, a genuine monetary instrument for people to, to have, to hold and control themselves and to know that it will forever be what it is. It's, it's not, a, you know, a, a fraction of a larger amount that they may never get back. So it kind of provides that opt out from a system that is fundamentally flawed by design mm -hmm. um, and is now starting to really show the cracks that have been around for, for many years. Yeah, it does feel like that. I'm certainly getting emails and tweets and texts and calls actually from readers and from friends saying, is my money safe? How much can I keep in my bank account? And this is particularly after the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, said it's not a great idea to keep more than £10,000 in your, your bank account. Now, as we know, you're, you're covered up to 85000 by the FSCS. But there's the FCA saying 10000 really. The rest, they say you should invest. Perfectly fine. But it's odd that they should actually say an amount because a lot of people need to have some, some cash set aside. Um, so do you think that this is going to have an effect on other coins? Uh, I mean, we are seeing Ethereum go up a bit as well. Uh, what about other coins? Are there any maybe stable coins that, that, that might do well out of this? What I want to, I think, reiterate before I start talking about uh, Bitcoin and other crypto and, and stable coins and things like that is that what we are seeing play out in the banking sector at the moment is... Um, while people's deposits are, are guaranteed up to a certain amount and there's uncertainty about over those amounts as to whether or not those deposits will be secured or backed. Mm -hmm. In the US, they're now apparently investigating ways to completely back all deposits in the system. Mm -hmm. And there was a coordinated uh, response from all central banks in major developed economies over the weekend 
more or less saying that they are going to fund liquidity through the banking sector uh, as much as is possible and as much as needed. So I kind of want people to understand that I don't think you should be worried about the, the money that's in your bank account because it looks like that the central banks will come out and say, you know what, we're going to guarantee everything at some point. Now, again, they haven't said that yet, but that it looks like what they're shaping up to do. And I want to make that point because mm. if they do that, if the central banks all come out and say, hey, we're going to back everything, that's going to turn on the money printers again. Yeah. And that's going to send us right back into where we were on steroids. Yeah. And what yeah. that's going to do is that's going to fuel the markets again. That's going to fuel cryptocurrency. And it's also going to make people realize that the central banks have this ultimate control mm. over money to do whatever the hell they want with it. And that's part of the value proposition that crypto provides and Bitcoin in particular is the opting out of that centralized authority saying, you know what, today we're going to do this. Tomorrow we're going to do this. On the weekend, we're all going to get together in a little you know, meeting room and we're going to Zoom each other. And we're going to, you know what, we're going to impact the entire world by making this decision. Yeah. Bitcoin by design is decentralized where there is no central authority to make that decision. The, the, the code and the, the, the software that it's built on is the monetary policy that's behind it all. Mm. So sort of with that out of the way, what that is doing is that has a knock-on effect as well. So as the value in of Bitcoin is realized and, and starts to increase more as fiat currencies devalue, uh, Bitcoin increases in value and it typically has a knock-on effect. So since its inception and the creation of altcoins and things like you know Ethereum and other different crypto out there, they tend to follow Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's kind of a leading indicator of the wider crypto market. What we're really seeing at the moment is as Bitcoin is now sort of leveling up with this banking uncertainty, there are other crypto that are sort of using Bitcoin as a base layer infrastructure and building around it, kind of like application layers on, on what Bitcoin would be as an infrastructure. And they're starting to really shift in terms of value as well. So Everything kind of Bitcoin related at the moment uh, is starting to really move higher in, in terms of the crypto markets. I, just going back for a moment to what, what you were saying about central banks saying they're going to shore up everyone you know, and everything. That it, it's, it does seem a bit like a sort of, you know, parents who will give their kids as much money as they like. They can go and lose it. They can go and spend it on drugs. They can spend it on alcohol, but they'll just keep, even though they can't earn, they'll keep giving them the money and that'll make them worse and worse. I mean, it, it can't end well, surely. It, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. It feeds the addiction. And mm. and it and it lends them to taking on more risks and 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 having exactly. you know just doing worse things, if they know that they're always going to be backstopped. I mean, in reality, they need to go cold turkey and completely look yes. at a completely re redesigned monetary system. But it's so entrenched in the fabric of society, and it, like the the one thing that, and you can debate about this with economists for every day of the week until you literally till the end of time. Uh, the idea of why inflation is actually good for an economy. Inflation is good for an economy based on the system we have, but maybe it's not actually the right the right way forward. And so there's a lot of ways we could go with this, but I think fundamentally it is, you're right, the, the idea that central banks now have this complete authoritarian control over the money system and, mm. and the banking system and and ultimately people's livelihoods. Yeah, exactly. And, and speaking of having control, we have more and more worries, to my mind, um, that governments, particularly our government, are going to impose a central bank digital currency, particularly as the, the current system starts to creak and look a bit worrying. They'll be going, oh, well, don't worry, we'll bring in the central bank di digital currency, CBDC, and, uh, and it'll all be smoothed out and it'll all be, be calm. Are you seeing that happen, or or is it yeah. is that just you know something that's being being waved in our faces, but but the technology isn't really there? Yeah, you know, this is this has definitely been coming for for a number of years, and and that's because of all the issues that we've just even you know the few that we've discussed already so far today, that the central banks are using this, and and they would use this as an opportunity to say. 
all right, if we're going to come out and you know say your money is safe and your deposits are safe, you can trust us because we mm -hmm. are the central bank, right? You, you yeah. have to trust the central bank. All money is really a form of trust. Mm. When you boil mm. it down to its most sim simple principles, yeah. it, is a, it is a matter of trust and confidence. Mm. And if there is no trust and confidence in the monetary system we have, the central banks have to restore trust in whatever shape and form they can. Because if you can't trust your regional bank, if you can't trust your high street bank, what bank can you trust? So to mm -hmm. avoid further bank runs and to avoid utter financial chaos in the markets, uh, the central banks will come out and say, right, we are your ultimate source of trust. In fact, we're so trustworthy. Why don't you just have an account directly with us? And we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll avoid the high street retail banks. They can go do corporate lending and they can do business lending. They can do all those you know, risk taking they want to do, but your, your money will be with us and you'll trust us. And we're just going to do it as a digital dollar. And if you want to, you know, we're going to program some things into it, but we'll worry about that later. But trust <laughs> yes. us. <laughs> we'll that's, worry about that's that. That's ultimately later. where they're heading. Yeah, that so that does. So you you are seeing this as a, a pretty pretty much a dead cert that that's what they're going to try and do, unless I'm assuming enough of us resist it. Yeah, I would think so, and that, that's why again you look at something like gold, and and while it is increasing in value, it's you know there, there's there's this idea of hard money and, and gold mm. and, and Bitcoin being hard money and, and mm. the idea of that your fiat currency is, is not. And yeah. I think, I mean, look, to be honest, you know, already we live in a, in a banking system where I think the Bank of England says it's about 96% of all money in circulation is digital anyway. There's only like 4% of actual phys yeah. physical cash yeah. circulating mm. around. There, again, it just comes back to trust. And mm. If the entire system is a digital dollar that is run by the central bank and and you know that they have ultimate control over that, there's going to be. I think we're going to end up ultimately with two two lanes of of financial system. We're going to have the central bank controlled system, which, by the way, plenty of people will be perfectly fine with, and will be happy to have their money controlled and determined by the central bank. And then there'll be a whole bunch of people that do not like being mm absolutely told what to do and living in yeah. that kind of authoritarian regime. And they will say, you know what? I don't want that. I want to have, uh, I want to opt out of that system. And that's what cryptocurrency provides. It provides that exit strategy from a system that, and we see it, you know, time and time again with the, the widening of the, the wealth gap, you know, mm -hmm. immense economic inequality yet, supposedly this is a system that's supposed to work for everyone and be inclusive and everything, but mm. there are millions, actually billions of people that are still unbanked around the world. So we have to ask, does this system actually work? And if cryptocurrency uh, provides that out in a lot of countries, which it does, you know, Argentina is at a hundred percent inflation for this year or for the last year. Uh, you know, how do you, how do you survive when, yeah, you know, you've got 100% inflation. We think it's bad here in the UK with inflation well above 10%. No one really knows the exact figure, but look at your energy bill, look at your shopping bill, yeah. look at your council tax, look at, look at everything that you pay for that never gets included in the CPI baskets. Everything's more expensive. It really is. It's, yeah, it's no, an opt-out really clause is. from that system. And do you think this is why, uh, because there are a lot of people who do want to opt out, is this why the high street banks are making it so difficult for us individuals to invest in Bitcoin, to, to even transfer money to a, a genuine, proper um, cryptocurrency platform? Yeah, there's. I think there's two two key things about that. Is one, they they probably are a little bit worried about losing deposits and because mm. that you know their deposits are then what they effectively lend on and provide money to and that's how they make profits you know if the banking system was fair and just you'd be able to sustain a bank that only took deposits and was completely 100 percent backed but those banks don't exist because no mm. banking system in the world has just deposit banks because they're fin financially unviable mm. it says a lot about the actual banking system itself so i think what you find is there's an element of that and there's an elephant ele element of them just covering their backside because if somebody does happen to fall victim to a scam, which there are plenty out there, both mm -hmm. crypto and traditional market scams out there, if the bank hasn't warned them appropriately or stopped them at enough um, checkpoints, the bank ends up on the hook for that. 
Mm-hmm. And and that's mm-hmm. a that's an issue with how the you know regulations are, are made within the financial system as well. So there's a sort of a lot of bits to it. So they're covering their backside and they're afraid of losing deposits for sure. And I, I think that's going to probably continue, but but that's okay because there are ways of you know around that, so to speak, without doing, you know, you're not doing anything illegal or, or wrong, but there are ways to go around uh, the banks stopping you from doing things. And, and it is a bullish time um, for, for crypto at the moment. I'm seeing all sorts of people saying, look, Bitcoin's up 50%. There's some um, Bellage on um, uh, Twitter. He was, uh, he's, he said he thinks that uh, Bitcoin's going to go to a million dollars in 90 days. It yeah. won't, but well, I don't think it no, will. But it won't. anyway, <laughs> there are all sorts of things, you know, it's, it's fairly typical, um, you know, crypto talk. But last year it was all, you know, ooh, doldrums. Or, but now it looks like, you know, the, the year, the 2023 is going to be the year of Bitcoin. I don't know. What do you think? Should, should crypto enthusiasts be buying now or just hodling? Look, I remember in 2013 when there was a banking crisis in Cyprus and then 2015 when there was a banking crisis in Greece. And I think it was at September 2013 as well when the US um, hit their debt ceiling and they basically had to pause uh, you know, they couldn't pay the, the civil service in the US. You know, so Bitcoin's been through a few banking crises before and it will, this is, this is probably the one that's closest so far. It's, it's, not, it's not exactly the same as, as 2008 yet, but it's certainly got the most indicators that it could be like that. This is the first major kind of crisis. But what we've seen previously in previous banking crises and financial crises around the world is that Bitcoin and and subsequently as other crypto follow that does very well you know in in the 2013 uh, cypriot crisis and then the knock on effects of that through through europe in particular um you know bitcoin did outstandingly well i think it was up five or six times um and that was still early days in terms of the adoption and awareness cycles of, of people even knowing about it 2015 again was a little bit different but again you know while banks across europe were getting cratering in in value you know down 20 30 40 percent greek banks down like 90 percent uh you know bitcoin was strong growing resilient and increasing in value so every time we see these banking crises and we see continual devaluation of fiat currencies bitcoin tends to do really well and i think my point is is that when you go back through the history of it time after time after time again i don't think it's wise to just stop and pick a spot. I've always been a believer in continuously looking to add to your holdings, uh, using Bitcoin as an uncertainty hedge against the entire banking and financial system. And that's that's been a, a strategy that has been so far historically proven to be the right one. And I think that's the sort of way to go forward with it as well. So again, kind of pound cost averaging, essentially, the sort of thing you do with, with shares. Yeah, absolutely. Be- because it is... If you convert it into fiat currency prices like pounds or dollars all the time, it is volatile. Mm-hmm. Um, there's probably another discussion to, to be had about even valuing it in pounds or dollars if these are currencies that we don't want to hold and we want to have Bitcoin as our denomination currency mm-hmm. in, a, in a global you know, system where Bitcoin is the reserve currency. You don't really want dollars or pounds. So there's kind of a pointless argument to even valuing it in dollars and pounds, but we might save that one for another day because we could be here for a long time. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Sam. Sam Falkering, who's a crypto expert and investment writer at South Bank Investments. Thank you so much for that. Absolute pleasure. Thanks uh, for having me on. <laughs>